Very good evening. We've got a rematch right here tonight. We've got the tallest bloke we could find at Sheffield United and the best boxer who supports Sheffield Wednesday. I think that's fair to say. It's a rematch from a year ago when we had these two guys together in the studio. Sheffield United's assistant manager, Alan Nill. Welcome oh, again, Alan. Hi, mate. Good to see you again. Thanks very much. Literally 12 months almost of the day, I think. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> it is. And Dan Slaney, who partnered you on that occasion, your sparring partner, the Owls fan, who is boxing for the Central Area title this weekend in Doncaster, at the Doncaster Dome. That's Thanks. right. It's nice uh, to be back. It, indeed. Two days to go. Yeah. And, and you're, you're here. Filling time, really. Yeah, two days. It's like champion of the bit now. It's... Um all the, the hard work's done and dusted, it's just um, when I get in there now and get the job done, that's that's the main thing. Doncaster Derby too, you're fighting against a fellow, almost a neighbour. Yeah, he's, he only lives within five miles of my house, so it's um, it's a real rivalry really. So uh, I've, not, unfortunately I've not seen him, I would be nice to kind of get my eyes on him at some point, but I'll see him tomorrow at the weigh-in. You don't know him socially? No, yeah. no, no, I know a few friends that, have, that know of him, but no, no, I don't really know him. Alan, it's good to see you. You've been around the, uh, the, well, apart from the football, since I last saw you, you've been to America on yeah. holiday. You've been to Glastonbury. Yeah, I went to Glastonbury. Is that part of the pre-season training? Uh, it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> I went last year, first time, and like, I, I, I like music anyway, so I yeah. try and watch loads of music. And so we went last year, and it absolutely poured down. It was terrible, and I, I went, I'm never going again. It was awful. And then obviously it comes round, or you, you get home and you go, oh, it was actually quite good that. And this year, the weather was brilliant. The weather was brilliant, so it made it a lot easier. Who did you see? Uh, uh, so we saw a lot. Uh, I'm an XX fan, the XX. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll mention I'm people. Like, I, I, I'm yeah. the same at work. I go, who did you watch? And I go, oh, I rattled off these. And I, no, I never heard of them. <laughs> no. So, yeah, XX and yeah. London Grammar. I'm a London Grammar fan. So we saw quite a few, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, th I think Glastonbury, Buriers, if you can call it that, Glastonbury, they're secretly upset when it doesn't rain and pour down and they're not rolling in mud. I, no, I wasn't. I know I wasn't. <laughs> You're not? No, definitely not. I've got to say, there's quite a few Blaze fans there. Were they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of flags. We got recognised a bit then. I try to keep uh, a hat, low hat and glasses. <laughs> yeah, a low profile, yeah. <laughs> I know, it sounds, it sounds <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> hat and dark glasses. Well, last time I saw you, you were, you were quite overwhelmed because it was inside uh, Sheffield Town Hall at the Civic Reception after you'd had the bus ride through town and yeah. got there. And I think you were fairly overwhelmed yeah. by the singing of your name. Yeah, I know. Um, we've got Alan Nil that was echoing down Surrey Street and all around Sheff Sheffield Town Hall, eh? Yeah, I know. It, it, it's, it's nice, but I'm, I'm kind of like one that likes to be, you know, not in the, not in the headlights, really, yeah, out front. Yeah, I'm happy to do my work quietly behind yeah. and, and let the manager take all... He, he did orders. enjoy it. Yeah, he had a great time. Had, yeah. To be fair, he's had a great month. He had he's a great month that month. <laughs> yeah, has it finished? Uh, I think so. I it's think finished. It's finally finished. I hope so. Because the other thing I remember, I think you were struggling to keep up uh, on that on that night, on in certain uh, aspects of the evening. With him? Yes. Oh, my God. There was no chance. There's no chance. Yeah. He was way ahead of us before we even started. <laughs> right. So, yeah, he had a yeah. good time. Well, I presented him with some Peroni when he came in. There was yeah. about 20 minutes worth. Yeah. There was about six bottles of 20 minutes worth of Peroni. But now you're back down to the hard work, and it really is hard work. You've done... I've got to get, get on to Alan Nils hard work in a minute. What about yours? Has yours stopped? Yeah, well, up it, to it has. Yeah, last night was the last uh, little bit of a shake-off session. Uh, made the final check weight last night. Um, so, yeah, all the hard work's done now. It's just a case of trying to put my feet up and, and rest ready for Saturday. You've gone down a weight, haven't you? Because you're um, now at uh, super middleweight. Super yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. fighting at 12 stone. This this fight's at yeah. 12 stone super middleweight uh, central area title. And I've, uh, I've dropped down from around about 12.7 at light heavyweight. So, yeah, about half a stone I've, right. I've shifted off. Is that difficult? Uh, no, not really. You know, if, you know not, not if you know what you're doing and, yeah. you know, I'm, dedicate myself to it and keep my discipline and, and, and just work hard. The same as, as these guys will at, at uh, players. You mean, well, you mean the yeah. players, don't you? Not, not the staff. Yeah. I don't no, mean you. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. the managers. But yeah, they, you know, we, we work hard and <laughs> try and be as well prepared as we can. Yeah. Um, you're fighting against Richard Thomas, uh, similar age to you. He's 31. I think you're 32. I am, yeah. Yeah. So um, neither of us are spring chickens, so to speak. We're not both 21. We've both got that experience. We've been in and around the game for a long time. Yeah. Um, and we're just ready to find out who's, 
It was the main man in these parts. All right, indeed. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You've both presumably got jobs. I know your main job is a teacher. Yeah. You know, you go from that genteel sort of very respectable scenario <laughs> into being a, you know, a raw fighter. You yeah. Know, and your, your, your kids at school actually look up to you for that, don't they? Bless I mean, them. Go on, sorry, Alan. They do. I mean, I'm just saying that, that yeah. I know they do. I've, yeah, seen, they, I've seen your Twitter. Yeah, they do. They're, yeah. they're really respectful about it, bless them. And they're always asking. It's the first thing they ask me when I've come back from a fight. How did it go? Yeah. What was it like? What was it like in here? What was it like in the other guy? So, yeah, it's, it's nice that they're that supportive. But at the same time, you know, I'm there to, to teach. So I've got to kind of put that on the back burner yeah. for the most part and, and make sure that they're learning. But it's, um, so. it's good. Pre-season training, sparring, what does that consist of at this, at this stage then? Uh, uh, we had two days of testing, Thursday, Friday, uh, last week. And then this week we've had the balls out, so pretty much football straight into football. They've come back really fit, like most do these days. It's not like the old days where no. it took you like six weeks to get fit. Now they're, they're fit before, before they come back, so it makes it easier for everybody. So this is measurements of body fat, weight, etc. Yeah, and yeah. just seeing really where yeah. they are and then deciding what we can do with them and how, f how quickly we can go football and the yeah. tempo and everything about it. So, Considering yeah. the kind of summer they've had, and absolutely right that they've had the start to the summer they did have, you've got to celebrate and really enjoy your achievements. I don't think I've seen a team enjoy its achievements more than yours. No, but... You know, quite right too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and as well, even though they're athletes, you can't be an athlete all the time. You have to let your hair down every now and again. And when you achieve like we achieved last year, you've, you've no option, and, and rightly so. But from then, as soon as it's over, the celebrations are over. They've obviously yeah. put in the work that was required, and they've come back really fit. And, and to come back fit mean, means it's less hard for them as well. Yeah. You know, if, if they're not sort of I'm going to say, up the yeah, downhill escalate. Yeah, it is. I, I have to say as well that pre-seasons have changed since when I was a player. Uh, I never saw a ball for four weeks. Now the balls are out after two days. So, yeah, it's changed a lot. But obviously the science has taken over and, and better for it, I think. How fit are we talking then? You know, when they come back, when you when when do yeah, they come back? Yeah, we, we, have, we give them targets. We give them targets before they go away, like body fat targets, right. and they have a off-season program that they have to keep to. And if they don't, then we have we have a so-called like if they come back That's overweight. Actually, yeah, if they come back overweight. Then there's a group that have to do extra. But we're fortunate that we haven't had, had that this year. So. And how close to match fit do they actually get an hour? Uh, no, they're a little way away, but I, I'm saying they probably could easily play like 60, 70 minutes now. Some of the training sessions we worked off on Monday and went, it was just like the middle of the season last yeah, year, the, the intensity it's of the training. A good position to be really, in. Really, really good. And Chris is a great believer in training as you play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we both are. That, what we do through the week matters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're going to helpful the right now? Yeah, yeah. it's full on. Um, yourself, I mean, do you do you train as you fight, or do you ever try and simulate? But, yeah, the, the, the whole time. Yeah, the whole literally. the whole the whole point of it is literally to get as close to the to the yeah. actual fight as you can. So, I've spent um, the last six weeks sparring ten rounds twice a week to to try to simulate, um, you know, the fight on Saturday night with with all the guys that are similar mm. similar sort of weight, perhaps a little bit heavier than me. A uh, similar sort of height and orthodox stance to the guy that I'm, you know, I'm fighting on Saturday. So you, you do like you will, you know, yeah. you try to get it as close yeah. but as not humanly all, possible. Not all football teams are the same no. in that respect, though, are they? No, I mean, I, some uh, are afraid of injuries. Yeah, reactions some don't sorts. do anything uh, through the week and just rely. Uh, I'm not going to say rely. It's what they think. We we obviously think this is the best way. And also, yeah. I think both myself and Chris, as players, you know, we wanted to get a sweat on. We wanted to work work hard and mm. come away and go well mm. done something today and I've, i always felt better going into a game on a saturday and well obviously we think the players do yeah. as well and, and and i have to say that when we came in last year the feedback from the players was yeah it's a lot more intense than they're used to but they enjoyed it a lot more you know yeah. they felt as if they'd worked yeah um Sheffield Wednesday supporter, of course. It's proving a very, very quiet uh, summer for, yeah, you, for, you, for it, you so far. We, we, uh, it's a bit ominous, really, and it's worrying, but you know, kind of exciting at the same time. Because you're always kind of sat by the phone waiting for you know for the notifications, the tweets, whatever's going to come up to find about you know transfer business. But it, it's nice that it's a little bit calmer this year than it was last year. Because obviously, don't forget, we we made mm. ten ton of kind of crazy signings, everybody yeah, coming in at some once. Some signings that didn't work, so I think they're yeah. being especially careful. I think they're trying to offload as well. Yeah, the squad's too big. But uh, 
we were talking before, and there was a good point that Alan made about if you're going for players at a certain level of the yeah. market, quite mm. high up, yeah. they're going to take longer to get in. Yeah, really, because they're in demand from other clubs, and, and the mm. selling club will keep them for as long as possible mm. and, and take the best price. Yeah, travel, travel so you, inevitably, you're going to be doing some late business, yeah. you, you would expect. And it, it is only... Well, we're just coming into July. We've got um, over a month to go. You know what fans are like? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I know. yours are saying Impatient. it's too quiet at Sheffield United. You've signed four. Yeah, we signed four. And, and you know, we're, we want the players in now. Obviously, we want the players in now yeah. that we're, we're going for. But you just have to be really patient yeah. and wait your time and, and just hopefully that you get them. You, you know, it's ideal if you can be working with them. It yeah. narrows down the time to work with them, but it's just the way of the world, yeah. isn't it, really? And, and, and as I just said, if you're after players that are in demand, the selling club keeps them for as long as possible. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure you won't be surprised. I've got a bit of a checklist here. Have you? Oh, yeah. Is it a yes, no? It's a yes, no It's answer, a yes, yeah. no. It, you, you, you and I are old enough to remember the, the yes, no incident on mean? TV. No, <laughs> all right, I am. There was a guy called Michael Miles who did a programme, I think, called Take Your Pick. And there was a guy with a gong, and he used to right. ask questions. And I can't remember that. And to be the fair contestant from the audience had to avoid saying yes or no. And in this case, really, all you've got to do is say yes or no. You've signed Ender Stevens, Nathan yes. Thomas, yes, uh, George Bulldog, yes, and Chet Evans. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, uh, Chris Wilder, management team, etc., in the throes of a new contract. Oh, congratulations yeah. on, Thank you. On, on that. Um, that tidies that up. Okay, names that are known about, right. um, that have been out there for some time. Yeah. Ricky Holmes of Charlton and Ryan Leonard of uh, South End. Yeah. Any progress on, uh, on those two? I'm going to say no. Uh, no it's progress. where it is. I think yeah. it's documented. We've made offers. Uh, but it's with their clubs at the moment, and there hasn't been any movement. But again, you know, they're good players, so the clubs keep hold of the players. For they want to keep. They don't, yeah, they don't want to lose them. So no, I mean, to wait and see. Is, is there a deadline on, on waiting? Uh, there? There's always a, a deadline, but as I said before, you know, we're still like five weeks, maybe six weeks away from the season, so we're plenty of time. Yes. And also, we know that. Those players are fit. They're doing pre-seasons yeah. at that club now, so yeah. we don't have to worry about fitness. Oh, so I was going to ask you, can you guarantee that those guys are going to be working? I mean, I know uh, they're all professional athletes, but they're going to be working to your standards. Uh, we can't guarantee that, but you know, we know they're not going to come back as if they've done nothing. Yeah. So we're starting yeah. from scratch, so they'll be working now. And for this to have gone on that long, you'd presume that both players would be quite open to to the move. Uh, I'd like yeah, to think so. You, yeah. I'd like to think so. You wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't think they wouldn't be, otherwise it would have been dead in the water before yeah. now. Ethan Ebanks, Landell from Wolves possibly, that you, you know about? Yeah, we had him uh, last year and uh, at the moment uh, I don't think there's anything ongoing but I think he is obviously someone we're interested in. You'd like to have back if you could. Uh, one name that cropped up just recently, um, Graham Carey, who, who scored goals and made goals for Plymouth in their promotion last year, yeah. that you were linked with. Yeah. Uh, I think that one's off. Yeah, he signed, signed a contract somewhere else. Uh, at Plymouth? Again? Yeah, I think he's gone uh, back to Plymouth. Hasn't he? he's, he's actually signed for yeah. Plymouth, I've I, read I, today. Someone said that to me the other day. I, I don't think we, we were linked with him. Well, we weren't internally. I don't know how it was. Oh, I see. So no, there was no didn't. actual no. Uh, no, nothing. definite interest, maybe in players of that type. I don't know. Um, there was the David Brooks speculation, obviously, Brooks, yeah. with uh, Everton. Now, Brooksy, of course, you, you, it was going to go to Chesterfield on yeah. loan, but that Toulon tournament changed that. Yeah, he's, he is, a, well, he's, first of all, he's a really good lad. Yeah. And uh, his progression from where he was at the start of last season to where he is now has been massive. And I've got to say, he's really just training with the first team, seeing what the first team do, and he's taken to it really well. Then obviously he's gone with England and had a great tournament. So uh, we we want to keep him really. We want to keep him in with us, and hopefully he has a great pre-season. Then you know we, you, it's down to him really where so he goes because he's got the talent. Yeah. He's got an opportunity to force his way into that yeah. first team picture. Yeah, definitely. From the start and, of the and you always see, you know, like young players, how the first team players react to him, and and they have really taken to him and they trust him in possession, yeah. and he's getting better out of possession. He's got a real chance. And it's just that physical development maybe yeah. needs to and, and really, you know, him being patient because he wants to play, but yeah. he can't always play, so trusting us with his development, really. Yeah. Do you know his best position? He's a great attacking kind of player from yeah. midfield either side, or where, where would you? Really? Uh, <laughs> he can play anywhere in the front, well, anywhere in a three behind. Uh, yeah. 
he can even play. Well, he's, originally, he's a left-sided central midfield player, but you know he moves really well with the ball and he goes past people. So you move him to the top of the pitch, but. He really is developing into a very good footballer. Yeah, any, any kind of possibility. The Everton, I mean, Jamie Hoyland was here, work, works for Everton, talked glowingly about him, but there was no way that he was talking about Everton ma making a bit. Certainly not at this stage. Yeah. I mean, down the line, uh, I won't involve you in it, but down the line, you could well imagine it with the Bramall Lane connections and the knowledge of this player, but I don't think so at the moment. Uh, but you never know, as well, they say in this game. You don't. Well, we you? want him in the first team, really. Yeah, you don't really want. You no. don't really want people coming. Absolutely, in. we want to see him develop for us and play for us. Yeah. Um, just last on the tick list before we ask you who. Well, give you a moment to sign the kind of players that you'd like Sheffield Wednesday to sign. Well, I just mentioned obviously Phil Jagielka's name came up. Bit of a dream and a wish yeah. list. You can uh, again logical because yeah. of his history yeah, yeah. and everything. But perhaps. I don't think so. Not yeah, I don't guessable. think so. No. Premier League last year, I think that someone mentioned Aston Villa and a couple of yeah. other clubs. So, yeah, I don't think so for us. No, not Obviously, he's a good player, isn't he? and yeah, if, well, if he was available, you'd jump at him. Yeah. Um, who would you jump at for Sheffield Wednesday? What kind of what kind of players do you think Carlos needs just to make that difference between I'm, that fourth spot and maybe going for the top two? I'm not convinced that we that we need to make any any real rush signs at the minute. I think he needs to. He's still. Undecided on, you know, his, his, his best eleven. I think we've got the back four sorted, and we've got the yeah. centre of the park in in uh, Bannon and uh, Hutchinson sorted. But I think, if if anything, he's got to make some uh, some signings for whip. We were talking about that earlier, weren't we? I think we need to, to spread the ball wide a little bit better. I mean, I'm a, um, a big fan of Wallace, but he's um, I, he's he's not a right-sided right winger, is he? You know, he's going to whip the ball in. He likes to cut in, cut in on his left leg. I think is, we need a little bit of creativity at the middle. Of that is there enough pace in the team? Um, from the front men, uh, yeah. probably not. I, I would, I would probably suggest not. I think it's nice when we get like reach down that left side, mm. but uh, you know, I, could they play I, a different way and have wing backs? Perhaps, but um, the way that the way that I think that he, that he shaped up towards the end of the last season, um, I think he was wanting two men up the front and and, and yeah. two wide players. But like we're saying, we're still not not sure on where those wide players are coming from mm. at the minute. So maybe that's you know that's his additions for the summer. Maybe that's something he's looking at. And central midfield, I heard. Anyway, um, with Sheffield United pace uh, again, everybody wants pace, but is that something you've looked to inject uh, a little bit more of this? Yeah, we've taken Nathan Thomas yeah. from Hartlepool, uh, quick, direct. Uh, gives us something different. Uh, again, though, Lavery, we've got Lavery who's quick. Leon, once he gets going, is quick. So, yeah, and Ched, obviously, Ched. Yes. Once we'll he talk, gets going. Talk more about Ched, maybe, yeah. in, uh, in part two. Um, I was going to ask you that, that there's some new deals on the table as well, apart from the, the management yeah. team. Um, I think uh, Billy Sharp, I think these players have already got a, yeah, they've got a year you. left. Billy Sharp, Chris Basham, Paul Coates. Yeah, I think. And what's the position? Then? Yeah, I think it's ongoing, but. Uh, I'm led to believe that it's, it's quite positive. I think Chris spoke to him today and it's quite positive, so yeah, we're all happy with that. For extensions in yeah. each, each yeah. case, about a year yeah. or whatever. Yeah, they were so excellent last year, so it makes sense for us. They were all excellent players, Fantastic, weren't they? Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, I had some tweets today, and you won't be surprised in response to you coming on. Um, I'll save one of them for, for part two. But I don't know what this is about. I don't know if this is a song or whatever. At Concrete Generation says, no nil, no party. He's the cream in your coffee and the sugar in your tea and the Peroni in your blood. Yeah. Now, I don't mean anything to I, you? No, nothing. The last bit sort of makes yeah, well, sense, we're all like doesn't it? Peroni, don't we? <laughs> well, some of us do. I'm more of a real ale man myself. <laughs> oh, and also Brian Wise on Twitter said, uh, ask Alan this, he said uh, his wife is a Wendy. Uh, I'm not sure if he means your wife is called Wendy or whether your wife's a Wednesday fan. Probably. Yeah, she is. Well, I, I don't she's think not she's not called Wendy. No, she's not called Wendy. <laughs> uh, coincidence. <laughs> Just a coincidence. No, she is a Wednesday fan, but not like goes all the time. No. Stepson is, though. But now, now, well, I can't say what. He, now he comes to Sheffield United more than Sheffield Wednesday, but he is a Does Wednesday he? supporter, yeah. Is he? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's got to be tough for him, hasn't it? It's got to be difficult. At times. I think I'd str I'd struggle. Yeah, at struggle. times. He's adapted really well, though. I think. I think the posh seats, the posh seats help, help you to adapt. But did not this make a nonsense of the hatred that comes into the rivalry sometimes? It makes a total nonsense. We'll talk maybe about that in terms of the Kell Brook fight. Yeah, in part two, do rejoin us. James Gregg will be here, Alan Neil will be there, and Dan Slaney there. You there. See ya.